All right, so today we're gonna to go through the process of creating wipeouts to make a more functional plan drawing, uh, as well as more functional blocks. So we're gonna take a drawing that has a lot of floor hatches and a lot of transparent furniture and turn it into a drawing that looks really neat and tidy like this, but can also be turned into a floor finishes drawing where it still shows all the hatches in their glory. So let's get started on how to do this. All right, so we're in model space and basically the drawing has been set up with some good layers and has some good blocks in it, but unfortunately all the blocks and all the hatches are just starting to be really messy and they just don't read right as a drawing. So to solve this, we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna actually create some standalone wipeouts. We're gonna create some wipeouts within blocks. And in some cases, we're gonna create a white fill that will act as a blocking or masking kind of region within AutoCAD where we can keep our floor design, but also make it where the furniture layout plan looks nice without kind of having to turn off the floor hatches. So first things first, I'm actually going to lock the layers these hatches are on. So the hatches are on hatch gray, so I'm locking that one, and there is a uh, plan floor transition layer, so I'm locking that one. This means it's not going to constantly be selecting every time I'm trying to kind of add something into my um, drawing. Next, I'm going to go through and add a wipeout to any of the rectangular objects that are um, that are just kind of lines and rectangles in the space. Uh, this is pretty straightforward and I'll show you in, after we're done how we actually control the draw order to make it look right. So before we actually make a wipeout, what we wanna do is actually create a wipeout layer. So I'm gonna just base it off of the zero layer and actually just say new layer. And I'm gonna call it zero wipeout. And that's cause again, it's gonna give us a lot more control later on. All right, let's make our current layer the wipeout layer. And now let's go and add a wipeout to some of these rectangular objects in the design. So if I just type the word wipeout, enter, I can then go through and draw a shape around and it will actually mask over everything underneath that wipeout. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this to all of these more rectilinear shapes, and we'll just show how easy it is to actually mask over everything that happens uh, below these wipeouts. We'll get to draw order in a second, so just bear with me as we do go through and add some wipeouts to these more rectangular shapes. And there we've done it. We've added these wipeouts everywhere we need them to be for these rectangular shapes. Now, to help with the draw order right now, what I'm gonna do is actually select all of the wipeouts. So select one wipeout, right click, say select similar, and it will select all of them. Then I'm gonna say right click again, draw order, send to back. Now, you might be wondering, it looks like I have completely wasted my time because it's just kind of sent it you know, be behind the hatches. This is why I'm gonna do the same thing. Select hatch, right click, select similar, right click, draw order, send to back. And I need to select my floor transition layer. So select similar and draw order, send to back. So now I've actually made it where I, all of my wipeouts are behind the furniture lines that are representing the furniture that are, is solid, but in front of the hatch layers and the hatch um, patterns that are intended to represent the floor. Now let's do the same thing for these other pieces of furniture that are actually blocks. So I'm gonna start with the dining table, or the dining chairs first. So these are really simple dynamic blocks. Basically, it's one block repeated all around the table, but it's dynamic in that it has this rotation action to it. So this means when we go into the block editor, so if I just say, bet it, click 
click OK. We have this lovely chair and we can do the same thing that we were doing in model space in this block editor model space. So in this case, I want to make it on the wipeout layer and not just on a zero layer. So I'm going to go back into activating that wipeout layer as my active layer. Type wipeout. And start my drawing. Now, importantly, let's make it where we can actually snap. You'll see that the wipeout layer can't handle curves or the wipeout command can't handle curves. And for most applications, that's absolutely fine because this is has a, you know, slight radius at the edges, but you will really be able to kind of still get the effect of a wipeout by going at this like smaller level of precision. For a truly curvilinear piece of furniture, we'll get to that in a second on how you can use a different technique on creating that masking region. So now that I've created the wipeout, I'm going to select it, right click, draw order, send to back. Now, because this was a dynamic block, I need to make sure that wipeout is added to the action with the rest of the lines. Otherwise, we might have a random floating wipeout that isn't associated with these lines. To do that, all I have to do is hover over this rotate action, right click, action selection set, modify selection set, and go ahead, select everything and press enter. That's all you have to do to add that wipeout to that action that we've already added to this dynamic block. Close block editor, save the changes, and lo and behold, every single one of the dining chairs has that wipeout added. Now I'm gonna go through the same process to these uh, chairs in the kind of sitting area, and then last but not least, we'll get to the ones here in the round tables. All right, now we need to do a couple of draw order situations. So if I select these pieces of furniture, deselect that hatch, right click, draw order, bring to front, we now cover the edge of that area rug. Last but not least, we need to add something that's going to create a masking region for these round tables. Now, importantly, as I said before, the wipeout command doesn't work on curved surfaces so or curved lines. So how I suggest you do the workaround is actually say, bet it. OK. This time we're going to do a hatch. But we are going to do the hatch in the wipeout layer because it's basically a hatch that acts as a wipeout. So if I just say, H, enter, select my object, so we're doing this circle, select the hatch, do solid, and also draw order, send it back. Now I want to change this, so instead of printing black, it's going to print actually white. Now I use the monochrome plot style by default just because it's one of those that you can you know, be assure, assured that every uh, installation of AutoCAD will have it installed and you don't have to worry about are you switching computers and you don't have your plot styles installed. So in the monochrome plot style, to print it with white, we need to set it where it's going to be a true color, which is 255, 255, 255. So there we go. If you don't have that color, you just select a color and go to the true color tab and it'll be kind of just drag it all the way up to the top where it has that color code. Click OK. And we have this white fill for our table. 
Now, importantly, you want to right click, action set, modify selection set, and select them all because this hatch is linked, or this table is linked to these different parameters here. So let's say, yeah, enter, and let's do the same one over here. Action set, modify selection set, and enter. Close block editor, save the changes, and we have these tables. Now this one's actually, these are above the rug, but this one isn't, so I need to right click, draw order, and bring to front. Now with that, we were able to actually create this drawing without having to trim or edit any hatch or try to duplicate the drawing. So now if I go into my layout, I can have this version and let's make a copy of this layout. And in my copied layout, I can start to freeze things in the viewport. So let's freeze the wipeout. Let's freeze the rug. Let's freeze the furniture. Lo and behold, I have one layout that shows all of my lovely kind of floor finish design. And then the other layout shows all of my furniture. One thing I would want to mention before we leave this idea of wipeouts is you'll notice that right now we don't see any kind of lines for the wipeout. But if we zoomed all the way in, there is actually a line where this wipeout didn't hit the perfect cur um, kind of curve of this corner. To get rid of that, what you want to do is type wipeout frame and then press enter. And right now you'll see that it's set at one. This is just a toggle command, so I'm going to set it to zero to turn that wipeout frame off. Press enter, zoom in. The wipeout is still there, it's just not actually showing the outline to it. So that's going to be the strategic way to approach the wipeout command and figuring out the draw order and figuring out how to make it work within blocks to make it where you're not having to be really finicky with hatches and you can actually cover things up effectively and strategically and efficiently. If you liked that video, check these out and click to subscribe where you'll be the first to see new videos I release every Monday. Thanks for watching!